Hi guys, I'm going to tell you a couple of things about the exponential function. So as you can see from the plot, this is quite a rising star in the maths universe, but she has her own social problems. I will tell you the story. So one night there was a big party of functions organized by x squared and everybody was invited. So there was sine x and cos x dancing in circles, square root of x was playing the piano, and uh, modulus of x was probably drinking a bit too much. And at some point, all alone in one corner, there was the exponential function. e to the x looked quite sad and was just sitting there, ignored by all the others. And at some point, x cubed came closer and started to chat. Hi, e to the x, how are you today? And she said, well, fine. And x cubed continued. Um, look, but this is a really cool party. We are all interacting with each other, sharing constants, we are having fun. Why don't you try to integrate yourself? And the exponential function became a bit serious and said, integrate myself? Look, I really tried but nothing changed at all for me. So this is a funny story, but it reflects a unique property that this function has. If you take its integral, it's just equal to the function itself, apart from a constant. And this is the same as saying that if you differentiate e to the x, you get e to the x again. So now in the rest of the talk, I'm going to prove this second property here. First thing we need, is a definition of the exponential function. And we can choose many, but we can select the one by Euler, which says that the exponential is the limit for n going to infinity of one plus x over n to the power n. Now, what's the meaning of that? This is an interpretation in the theory of um, continuously compounded interest, which means that if you have one pound and it earns interest at the rate x over a period of time, and uh, you divide this period of time into n intervals and let this n grow unboundedly, then at the end of the day your money will just become e to the x. Now, nowadays no bank will give you an interest rate which is exponential, but this is good to know. So we will use this definition and then we will use the fact that the natural log is the inverse of the exponential function and we will divide our proof into steps. The first step we are going to prove that the derivative of the log is 1 over x. And in the second step, we will use this fact to prove that the derivative of e to the x is then just e to the x. So we need to start from first principles and define the derivative of the log in terms of the incremental ratio. So derivative of log of x is equal to the limit for some increment h going to 0 of ln of x plus h minus ln of x divided by h. Now, by the properties of the log, this can be rewritten in the following compact form. Limit of the logarithm of, and then here you have a ratio, so x plus h divided by x to the power 1 over h. Now, it's useful to make a substitution. So you can introduce another variable n, and this is just taken to be 1 over h. So if you have h that goes to 0, your n will go to infinity. This allows you to rewrite this expression in a form that is maybe more tractable. In fact, it becomes the limit for n going to infinity of the log of 1 plus 1 over um, n x to the power n. Now, of course, you can swap the limit with the logarithm because the logarithm is continuous. So you have the logarithm of the limit of 1 plus 1 over n x to the power n. Now, if you recall the definition by Euler of the exponential function, you will see that this bit that we have here is just, by definition, the exponential of 1 over x. So our derivative becomes equal to the logarithm 
of the exponential of 1 over x. And given that the logarithm is the inverse of the exponential, this is just 1 over x. And we have proven the first part. Now it's going to be very straightforward to complete our proof by just using this fact. In fact, if you want, you can take the derivative of logarithm of the exponential of x. If you simplify, then you get that this is equal to just the derivative of x. So this is equal to 1. On the other hand, you may use the chain rule. So this gives you 1 over e to the x times the derivative of e to the x, which is what you want to compute. But given that these two expressions must be the same, then you have from here that 1 over e to the x times derivative of e to the x is equal to 1, which implies that derivative of e to the x in the x is just e to the x, which is what we wanted to prove in the first place. So, in summary, if this function tries to differentiate herself from the mass, nothing changes. If it tries to integrate into parties, nothing changes. But this uniqueness makes it quite cool and one of the best functions in the maths universe. That's all. Bye.